I received a question in the email. I'm going to read this person's question. I'm going to answer the question. All right. So he says, Freddie, I saw a Bruce Lee quote that says, the best fighter is not a boxer, karate, or judo man. The best fighter is someone who can adapt to any style. End quote. Because of this quote, do you think a martial artist should practice grappling just as often as he practices striking? Also, is it okay to practice grappling with a sparring partner as long as you both go lightly and agree to, to, to let go once the other taps? I've been grappling for about six months and have been submitted many times, but my partner's always let go once I tap and I've never been hurt at all. I'm not an FMK hater, I just want to know your thoughts. Alright, so, I'm going to answer this guy's question. Um, so now he says, do you think a martial artist should practice grappling just as often as he practices striking? I think a martial artist should be well-rounded in his development, not just in regards to the combative techniques, but he needs to train in the combative techniques as a whole, yes, in addition to a high emphasis on fitness, um, in addition to the spiritual training. So there's a lot of training involved. So meaning um, he should be trained, if you train two hours a day, and you divvy up everything up accordingly, there might be 30 minutes for fitness, right? Um, there might be, then you gotta do flexibility training too. I mean, you got cardio training, you got strength, you got cardio training, you got strength training, you got flexibility training, all right? You got um, the combative training, and there's so much to train in the combative training, so everything deserves its, its time, you know? And then you got the spiritual training, you know, the inner reflection and the meditation and all of that. So, like, a martial artist should, you know, the stand-up fighting, like, primarily, you want to perfect the stand-up fighting, I say. You know, I mean, you got to be able to adapt, but what I'm saying is that a martial artist will be training in everything within the martial arts. Grappling is a part of, a, a small part of it. But you realize, like, where is real war going towards? It's not going towards grappling. That's like, that's child's play compared to, like, the real war. If you look at real war, what does it involve? It involves firearms, the use of weapons. That's that's a big part of it. You look at the US military, you look at the military, they got weapons. Alright, so and you saw with the way Bruce Lee expressed himself, he was mainly he was expressing all stand up fighting. All stand up. He doesn't grapple. Somebody would try to grapple with him and then what he do? He bit him. So he doesn't grapple. He focuses on the stand-up fighting. And then when they try to grapple with him, he gets out right away. He gets back up or he bites them. Get right back up to the stand-up. And he was going towards the weapons. So grappling is like here. Stand-up, you know, it's like down here. Stand-up fighting is here. It's more effective than grappling. But if a grappler try, a grapplers try to take you down to their game, Stand-up fighters take, make you stand up to their game, or they go beyond, and that's the, that's the introduction to weapons. So a stand-up fighter is here, grappler is here, grappler is trying to get the stand-up fighter to play his game. Stand-up fighter is like, no, you're playing my game, get back up. The grappler gets back up, gets knocked back down, grappler gets back up, stand-up fighter knocks him back down, and he's like, you don't got, you don't got what it takes. And the grappler is still trying to pull them back down. Stand-up fighters, they don't, they don't go down there with them. They don't play that. What they do, you perfect the stand-up fighting. And once you get close to perfection, then you start going towards weapons. So you see in Bruce Lee, the types of weapons that he used. In Enter the Dragon, you saw him use a bow staff. In Enter the Dragon, you saw him t use two sticks, right? The two short sticks. He's known for his nunchucks. So he was using the two sticks. He was, us he was using 
the staff, and he was using nunchucks. Those were his main weapons. And even even some of these movies that before Enter the Dragon, he had some like darts with them. He used the darts too. You know, in this, in one of the, some of these movies, he had darts with them. He used that. All right. He he used the stick. He used the the two the two short sticks, and he used nunchucks. And then when he fought against um, Danny Asano, he used like a bamboo stick. It was like a, a longer stick. So he was using weapons. And rather than basically, rather than spending your time wrestling around with another dude, you might as well train in weapons. Train with the sticks, the double sticks. Train with the nunchucks. Train with the knives, train with the swords, train with the guns. That's where the real fighting is. Basically everybody says, hey, you know, don't don't bring a um a knife to a gunfight. Well, don't mess around with the stupid grappling with the real martial artist. Because real martial artists will have not just his hands, his fists, his elbows, his knees his feet to to attack you but he will use the weapons as well so rather than playing this this ground game you perfect the stand-up game the striking game hands elbows knees feet the stand-up game perfect the stand-up game and then go this way the real way towards the weapons not down there but towards the weapons now Surviving down there is just getting up. You don't really need to teach people, spend so much time, years teaching people how to get up. I mean, it's like teaching, you know, teaching somebody how to get up after they fall. Well, you know what? They shouldn't fall to begin with. But if they do fall, they should already know how to get back up pretty, pretty easily. You know, and a lot of it is just being highly athletic, if you're highly athletic, they're not going to be able to take you to the ground easily. And when they do take you to the ground, they're not going to be able to keep you down there for too long. Because you're just highly athletic. Basically, if you're really strong, you're really fast, they're not going to be able to keep you on the ground. First of all, it's going to be, it's going to be a, very hard for them to take you to the ground. And even if they take you to the ground, it's going to be very difficult for, the, for them to even keep you on the ground. Especially when you're, you're, when, when there are no rules in play. Meaning you could bite, you could, you could gouge their eyes, you could do whatever you want to do to them. You could fish hook them, you could do whatever you want to do. Pull their hair, pull their ears, whatever you want to do. They're not going to be able to keep, they're not going to want to keep you to the ground. And in addition, if you have weapons, they're really not going to want to take you to the ground. You know what I'm So... Basically, a martial artist is can adapt, but look at the world that we live in. There are weapons. The world are guns. So meaning, Bruce is talking about, if there are gun, there's guns out there, you got to learn to adapt to that. You better start training them guns. You understand? I mean, the world that we live in, the real violence in this world are the weapons. It's not the grappling, it's the weapons. The most dangerous people in this world are the ones with the weapons. So the martial artists need to be able to adapt to this violent society that incorporates weapons. A martial artist also needs to adapt to these situations where you're getting attacked by multiple people. I'm talking about 10 on 1, 5 on 1, 7 on 1. You're going to need to adapt to that. Grappling is not going to help you with that. Being on the ground is the worst place you want to be when, there's, when you're fighting against 5 people, 7 people, 10 people. What you want to do is you want to be standing on your feet with that gun out. With those 10 people coming at you after you while you're armed. Or you got the nunchuck out. Or you got the stick out. Or you got the double sticks out. Or you got your knife out. While those 10 people's trying to take you out. You're going to take them all out with that weapon. That's adapting. And you see it all over his movies. That's what he's expressing visually. And with his writings, that's what he's teaching as well. You need to be able to adapt. But adapt to the society right now that, that's based on no rules out there when there's real death not adapting to
this controlled environment that's prearranged for entertainment. The cage fighting, the boxing, the WWF, that's for entertainment, that's, that's not real fighting. Real fighting is out there in the streets. Real death. Not just too long ago, um, a little girl, 23 year old girl got jumped by five people and got beaten to death. That's real. That's real combat. That's what we got to prepare for. Now, how are you going to survive that situation? Well, if you get jumped by five people, you don't want to be in the ground. That's how she died. So you want to be defending yourself while standing up. And if you got that weapon, you're going to use it. You got that gun, you're going to use it. You got that knife, you're going to use it. You got that stick, you're going to use that. You got that nunchuck, you're going to use that. You got your other friends with you, they're going to jump in. You understand? So the real world... There are no rules, and there are weapons out there. You can easily kill 10 people with a gun, easily. That's the, that's the reality of what it is. The real world are multiple offenders. The real world are weapons. That's what you need to adapt to. It's not, it's not the ground fighting. Now, yes, you need to be able to get back up quick. If you get knocked down to the ground, you got to get back up. That's a given. Yes, you got to know that. That's easy to learn. Get your ass back up. Another thing is, you got to learn not to get knocked down. Don't get knocked down. Don't get tackled. And if you do, know what to do. Which is not that hard. So, you don't need to revolve, like, you know, your whole life around getting falling down. You should basically be trained to not fall down. That's, that's how a real martial artist trains, to not fall down. But if he does fall down, he's going to get back up quick. A real martial artist, you're not going to be able to keep him on the ground. First of all, you're going to have a really t difficult time taking him to the ground. And second of all, if you do take him to the ground, you're going to have a very diff difficult time keeping him on the ground. Okay, so just think about this, you know, Bruce Lee was heading towards the web. He was not just heading towards, he was all about the weapons. He was all about stand-up fighting. He wasn't about the ground fighting. Because he knew that was not the way. He's heading towards weapons. Okay, so, you know, if your life is at stake, who are you going to run to to protect you? Somebody with a gun or a ground fighter? You're going to run to the person with the gun. He's going to help protect you, not the, not the ground fighter. Point blank. All right, you take the gun out of the picture. All right, who's going to protect you? The samurai, the expert samurai, or the ground fighter? It's going to be the samurai that's going to protect you. Because this is where the world is. is, is. It's, it's about the weapons. And then right below the weapons are the unarmed combat techniques standing. And then the ground is for people who are not proficient enough in stand-up fighting. And then they end up in the ground and they need to survive on the ground. But their goal, their objective is to get back up, is to stand back up where they're supposed to be. So this is how we're meant to fight, standing up as humans. You know, and, and really, if we do incorporate the ground fighting, we got to put it in a perspective of real combat for survival, which has no rules. So if you're going to ground fight, then incorporate the reality of it. Go ahead and bite. Go ahead and um, utilize whatever you need to utilize to win that fight with no rules. That makes it real. And then it's going to make the people not want to be on the ground. Because they're going to notice that if, you know, that if you could do you know, these certain techniques where you could go for the grown area, where you could bite them, where you could, where you could gouge their eyes, you could pull their hair, you could do a lot of different things that they're not used to they're not gonna they're not gonna want to be in the ground you know so basically being very strong being very fast you know just think about it you know if somebody's you got an animal that's super fast you can't even the elephant wants is wants to fight with the lion that's way faster he can't even catch the lion so he can't even take it to the ground. So that's pretty much what happens with a lot of these ground fighters. 
when they're not fast enough, they try to take the person to the ground because they're not fast enough. But the person's too fast for them, they're not going to be able to do nothing. You know, so, like, the reality is stand-up fighting and weapons and surviving on the ground, which is not too hard to learn. Learning not to be taken down to the ground. And if you are taken down to the ground, you know how to get back up quick. That's the reality of it. Um, but that's the reality that I, that I see. Um, but really, it boils down to practicing what you like to practice. If you like to grapple with people, then that's what you like to do. You know, then, then hey, look at it as a great form of exercise. You know, yes, you know, it could be used as a way of self-defense or a way to survive a certain situation. But beyond that, it's just a way of exercise that you enjoy so if you like to grapple then that's what you like to do then go ahead and do that you know but everybody's gonna have their likes and dislikes but what I'm saying is you want to practice something more relevant to the martial arts then 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 it should be stand-up fighting with the strong focus on stand-up fighting and then weapons you know yeah you could do the ground if you want to do it Go ahead, do that too. But make sure that you do all of that. Every single weapon out there, not just one weapon, but all the weapons. And then do all the stand-up fighting and then do the ground game. You'll see that there's just so much to train. You'll be training for your whole life. And you got to do the fitness too. And you got to do the spiritual. So there's just so much to train. Yeah, go ahead and train all that. Go ahead and train in all of that. But, you know... If you like to grapple, then you like to grapple, and just you can do that, whatever you know. But everybody has their own interests, what they like, what they don't like, you know. Um, but I train everybody to be balanced. That's why I train people to be able to fight with their right leg forward, le left leg forward. They can interchange, they can adapt. Some people they just they just stick to one, but I don't teach that. I teach you know do both, you know. But the fact of the matter is, you know, you perfect the gun, you perfect the sword, you don't need to worry about the ground, because you perfected, you don't even need to worry about unarmed combat, because you perfected the weapon. That's the most effective. That's why the police officers are protecting us, because they got the guns. You know, so you need, you want to perfect the weapons, you want to perfect the stand-up fighting. Because, you know, people say, oh, you know, they always say this bullshit statement, you know, I mean, all fights end up in the ground. But the reality is, all fights start standing up. You know, if you, if you if it ends up going to the ground, then that's basically, like, your imperfection in, in your ability to keep that fight standing up. But even if it does go to the ground, you can get right back up. You know, but when it comes to multiple, multiple offenders, I mean, um... You know, they tackle you down to the ground, it's hard to survive. And it doesn't matter how much ground fighting you have. You got multiple people stockpiling on top of you, nothing you can do about it. You need to keep the fight standing up so then you can move around and basically survive while you're on your feet. You know, I mean, that's the reality of it. You know, that's, that's, that's from my perspective. Alright, now this guy's asking, is it okay to practice grappling with Spartan partner as long as you both go lightly and agree to, to let go once the other taps? I mean, you could go ahead and, and grapple if that's what you like to do, but just, that's what you like to do, but don't think that that's real combat. In real combat, there's no tap outs. In real combat, you're going to be utilizing techniques that are hard to basically spar with. I mean... Bruce Lee himself was biting the person that, that got that, that got him to the ground. So if you're not utilizing biting, you're not utilizing eye gouges, you're not utilizing like like certain like very critical survival methods. Like even even animals, they use their claws. So you got you know, an animal, you're you're threatening an animal, they're gonna claw your eye out. A human being should be able to do that too. You can't tell somebody they can't claw your eye out when he's when he's about to get choked out. So before he, he you even get the choke on him, he just clawed your eye out. That's the reality of how it's supposed to be. But then you tell the person, oh, you're not allowed to do that, and then you get choked out. That's not that's not real. The real is just no rules where you can do what you need to do to survive. And if you're not allowing the real to occur, 
during the grappling situation is just it's just like it's just a game of exercise. That's all it is. It's like arm wrestling. That's what you're doing. You know, you might as well just arm wrestle with each other. Or just lift a bunch of weights. I mean, it's just like it's like it's like a physical exercise endurance you know, endurance type of training. You know, all this like grappling, but that's what you like to do, that's what you like to do. But keep it safe, you know. Keep it keep it safe. You know, you could you know, then that's what you wanna do, you know, but there's a lot of sweat that goes around, even though it's not just about the tap outs, but it's just about the, the exchange of bacteria and the ringworm and the cauliflower ears. I mean, that stuff is nasty. I mean, look at a lot of these wrestlers, a lot of these uh, blowjob jiu-jitsu guys, they got, their ears are all poofy with pus. That's disgusting. You know, and they, you get ringworm. There's a lot of bacteria being exchanged. I mean, it's disgusting. You don't want to be sweating or sweating on top of another human being like that. It's not something that is enjoyable. But if that's what you want to do, then that's what you want to do. You know, but not is it? It's not just about the tap outs and the chokes as well. You know, what I mean, you're putting your life in the hands of another person. You're t you basically there's a lot right there. There's a lot of trust involved. But the guy's got you in a choke. And you're tapping out and he let go. But what if he doesn't let go? He could easily just not let go. And you're trying to tap out and then next thing you know, you're dead. I mean, you don't, messing around with chokes is not something that you want to play around with. I mean, there's, there, there's a real life story where, you know, this person's, um, you know, this, this teenager's watching this WWF stuff. And then he, he ended up getting his cousin like a 25 year old cousin into a choke they got him in that rear naked thing and then he killed him cause the, cousin, the bigger cousin didn't want to give up and then he ended up choking him till the dude died there's that aspect I mean you're, you're talking about like taking somebody's breath away that's that's extremely dangerous it's not something that you play with you know it's dangerous it's, it's, it's dangerous like you know Doing a lot of weight on the bench press and then having somebody spot you and then he doesn't he doesn't spot you correctly and he kills you. Like you're benching 300 pounds and the spotter is not helping you and then he just lets the weight drop on your neck and then you die. I mean, when, you, when you're dealing with like a lot of weight like that, that's extremely dangerous. When you're talking about grappling around with somebody involving chokes, that's extremely dangerous. Because you're talking about your life right here. So you got to be very careful when you do with anybody. Because he doesn't have to let go. If he's got you in a choke, he doesn't have to let go. He could easily kill you right there and say it's an accident. But wrestling is different. Wrestling doesn't incorporate chokes. You just, it's just about pinning people. So it's not as dangerous. But choking somebody, that's not, that's not, that's not something to be played with. So that's something you got to be careful with. You know, that's my opinion right there, too, with that. Um, you know, now he says he's been grappling for about six months. He's been submitted many times. All right, so that's not good. If you're submitting so many times, then there's something wrong there. You know, but I think a lot of times it boils down to fitness. You either don't have enough cardio, or you don't have enough strength, you don't have enough speed, you don't have enough reflexes. So it's just kind of like when you're getting tapped all the time, when you when you tap it out all the time, it's just it's like, it's like, say your max bench press is 135 pounds, and then every time you go into the gym, you try to do you try to max out at 150 or you try to max out at 200. You're always gonna fail because you 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 haven't built yourself up to do 200. You still your max is only 135. What are you doing under the bench press of 200? You're gonna fail every time. It's just basically I see that people that tap out a lot are basically people that are not fit. If you're not fit, you're not fit. The person that you're grappling with, it's not even a, a lot of times it might not even about be t about technique at all. It's just simply because he's just a lot more fit than you, and you're not gonna be able to 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 beat him because he's just more fit than you. It's just kind of like somebody that's faster than you, like he could outrun you. Like say in the mile time he gets five minutes. And then your mile time is seven minutes. And then every single day you go in there and you try to beat him in the mile. You can't do it. Because his mile time is five and yours is seven. 
you're gonna have to it's gonna take time to beat the guy it might take months it might take years it might you might not ever beat him because he's so far ahead of you because he's got a five minute mile you got a seven minute mile that's two two minutes that's a long time and that's why you keep tapping out all the time but it's just it boils down to fitness a lack of fitness and just acknowledging that this person has more fitness than me and that's so then basically it just boils down to just training your fitness to get to a higher level to increase your chances of survival that's the way I see it the only reason you're tapping out the only reason a lot of people tap out is just simply because they're tired they can't they're just winded that's why they're tapping out and that's not even about you don't even have to roll around the ground with somebody forever to, to figure that out you just figure you just you just realize you just admit that you got a lack of cardio that needs to be developed. You got a lack of like speed. You got a lack of um, strength that needs to be developed. It needs time to be developed. That you know, spend time doing calisthenics, doing weight training, doing a bunch of like cardio fitness type of exercises to build your you know athleticism up. So then, so then you won't have to tap out next time. You know, it's just like somebody that's just way stronger than you. And then they just beat you in the arm wrestle every single time. Well, I mean, you could you challenge him every single time, but you're gonna lose every single time because he's just he's been training. His fitness is just so much more than yours that you need time to develop before you 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 spar with them again or you grapple with them again. That's pretty much what it is. You know, it's just a bull. You know, when it comes to grappling, it's just boiling down to fitness. I I, I clump grappling down together with fitness. Somebody that's highly fit, you may have a really hard time grappling with them. Because the techniques are not that difficult. It's, it boils down to a lot of it is fitness. That's pretty much what it is. You know, and um, if you keep yourself very fit, um, these grapplers, no matter how long they've been training, they're going to have a very difficult time with you. Extremely difficult time. Simply because you got a lot of athleticism. And they can't match that. You know, you're strong in them. You're faster in them. You're, you have more endurance in them. They can't even, they can't handle you. A lot of it boils down to fitness. Um, but yeah, that's all I got to say about that. Um, so, you know, I'm not really against the grapplers. You know, before this whole UFC thing, I didn't have a problem though with the wrestlers. You know, I I I I I I acknowledge the wrestlers to be very athletic. You know, I I recognize the talent in the wrestlers. You know, before UFC even even existed, you know, I had a martial arts club. And I invited some, you know, I allowed some wrestlers to join the club. And they contributed some positivity to the club. Mainly, you know, like exposing the weaknesses of the stand-up fighting. And what, you know, what things that they looked for in order to basically um, break down the ability of the martial artists. You know, wrestlers, they, they typically are very athletic because they train really hard they get really strong they get really fit that's why their effect is not really the, the the wrestling it's just that the fitness that they value puts them at so much an, an advantage over the the average martial artist because the average martial artist the average so-called martial artist is a very lazy idiot that doesn't spend any time in the fitness training that's why the wrestlers have that advantage because they have so much fitness compared to the average martial artist. So I, I acknowledge the, the wrestlers for the talents that they have. I'm not really against the wrestlers. I'm against the ground and pound. You know, I'm, a, I'm against the Rodney King with the police just beating on the dude. I'm against, like, like basically abusing your powers. Like hurting people more than you have to hurt them. I'm against taking it to the ground in a violent manner for competitive reasons. Like for entertainment value. I'm against that. 
college wrestling, I'm fine with that. Okay, college wrestling rules, go ahead. Whatever. Boxing, hey, you know, you let them get back up, you give them a count of 10, they get knocked down three times, TKO. I'm cool with that. All right, let's keep it at that. I'm fine with that. But I'm not cool with this whole ground and pound, this whole UFC bullshit where they're tackling people down and just pounding. Not, I'm not, I don't agree to that. Just imagine if they did that in football, you know? Like, you tackle him, on top of tackling him, you take off the helmet and you start pounding him in the face. I mean, what the hell is that? You know, you got him down on the ground already. Alright, cool. That's down. Get, let him get back up. Let's go to the next play. You know what I mean? Like, like I'm not, I just, I just, I, I just, I hate that ground and pound thing with a passion. That's encouraging people to take, to escalate the violence, bef escalate the violence beyond what is necessary. That's what I speak against. You know, so, but if the people like to grapple with each other, okay, that's cool, you know, whatever, you know. Um, and I'm against the blowjob jujitsu because they need people to ground and pound them in order to exemplify what they do. Because if the people don't ground and pound them, they're just a bunch of nobodies. A bunch of sissies that can't stand up fight. That are just, you know, they're, they're worthless. You know, that I'm against the blowjob jiu because they're exploiting the martial arts, they're they're turning it they're 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 escalating the violence in order to exemplify what can possibly be done if somebody's like grounding and pounding you. This is how you could counter it. And they're and they're they're taking it into an entertainment venue where you're they're profiting off of violence. I, I completely disagree with that. You know, and um, if that's going to be the case, you know, then we should exemplify the real violence, which involves firearms and weapons and multiple offenders. Now, how are you going to survive against that? You know, and that's something that's the real. You know, I mean, um, people think grounding and pounding is dangerous. Well, there ain't nothing come dangerous compared to somebody that's got a gun pointed at you or that has, you know, 10 of his friends that want to gang up against you. Or that have sticks running after you, or pipes, or bats. Well, what you think grounding pounds dangerous? Ain't none compared to all what I just mentioned. You know, so the real martial artist needs to prepare for the real dangers out there, not just the grounding and pounding, but for the multiple offenders, for the pipes, for the beer bottles, for the bricks, for the guns, for the knives, for the swords, to the sticks, everything, to the brass knuckles. All right, so real martial artists have to see the bigger picture beyond all this entertainment bullshit out there as far as WWE cage fighting boxing Muay Thai wrestling it's just all for show it's all for entertainment the real deal are out there in the streets police officers have to deal with it alright bouncers have to deal with it security guards have to deal with it alright the real things that happen out there where your life is really at risk. That's what real martial artists train for. And look at what happened. Look, look what's going on in the news. Look at all these shootings. Look at all these stabbings. Look at all these like ways that people are dying. That's what we need to prepare for. And that's what Bruce is talking about when, he, when he's talking about learning to adapt. Learning to adapt to your circumstances. So meaning, you know, if the law says it's okay to carry a gun for your survival, then you better start carrying that gun. You better learn, learn to adapt to what the law says that you're allowed to do because that's going to increase your chance of survival. Because if everybody else has guns out there and you don't got a gun, you're the one who's the sit, you know, the sitting duck that's going to get shot. But, you know, you get armed and they're armed, now it equals the playing field. You understand? So, you, a lot of it is like, Knowing about the law, knowing about like, you know, what you can and cannot do out there, legally and illegally. But as far as the criminals are concerned, as far as the gangbangers are concerned, they don't care about the law. They really don't. They, they really don't have restrictions. Because the law says don't carry a gun. They carry a gun. The, the law says, you know, um, don't kill. They kill. 
They don't follow the rules out there. The law says you can't, you know, gang up and beat, you know, on one person and beat them to death. They don't care. They do it anyway. So these criminals have no sense of morality. They just do whatever they want to do. But the martial artists have to find a way to survive in this violent world while trying their hardest to adhere to the law and what the law will and will not allow. So, real combat is way beyond this ground fighting. The ground fighting is just, it's like nothing. It's, it's just, it's like for kids. It's like WWF. It's not real stuff. The real fighting incorporates a, an immense amount of danger. Talking about real guns, talking about real knives, you're talking about real death. That's real martial arts.